Uh, Rudy Giuliani is joining us on the phone right now, uh, the president's uh, personal attorney. Uh, um, um, Mayor, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, well, let's get your immediate reaction. You've read this four-page single-space letter. What do you think? Well, I'm, I'm here with Jay Sekulow, my co-counsel, and we've had a chance to quickly go through it. We think it's a complete exoneration of the president. Certainly, it's quite clear, no collusion of any kind, including the entire Trump campaign, which kind of raises the question, why did this ever start in the first place? And then as to the obstruction, Wolf, the, the, the key there is that uh, the attorney general and the deputy attorney general made the conclusion that you don't have obstruction when there's no underlying crime. And I think that we've said from the outset that this was a situation where uh, there was no collusion, there was no obstruction, and now we have the weight of the Department of Justice uh, agreeing with us. Well, very important, though. I want to get your reaction to one line uh, in this letter. They quote the special counsel, Robert Mueller, as saying, uh, as far as obstruction of justice, uh, this is to you, Jay, and to Rudy Giuliani, quote, while this report does not conclude that the president committed a crime, it also does not exonerate him. What's your reaction to that? Yes, but then, but then if you go on to the next two paragraphs, Wolf, the attorney general does kind of a brilliant analysis of it. And he says that he and Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein have concluded that the evidence is not sufficient to establish that the president committed an obstruction of justice offense. Then he goes even further, and he points out that basically under settled law, it's almost impossible to have an obstruction of justice if there's no underlying crime. Quite a brilliant lawyer-like analysis. And then he concludes with a very strong statement in cataloging the president's actions many of which took place in public view, the report identifies no action that, in our judgment, that's Rosenstein and Barr, constitute obstructive conduct. That is a complete exoneration by the Attorney General and Rod Rosenstein. Mr. <laughs> Mayor and, and, and Jay Sekulow, it's Dana Bash. I just want to, to, to drill down on what you just said, uh, Mayor Giuliani, about the fact that, uh, that the letter, the part of the, about the obstruction is, to use your word, the analysis of the attorney general. We're already hearing from Democrats as high as the House Judiciary Chairman that it's only that, that this is not the determination of Robert Mueller, but simply the analysis of the president's handpicked attorney general. Let me just say one thing. No one should be conflating an independent counsel statute, which is what Ken Starr operated mm -hmm. under, and a and the special counsel and the regulations. Yeah. He is part of the Department of Justice and is bound by the Department of Justice policies and guidelines and, and policies in this particular case on obstruction are very clear, and that's what they follow. So what, what Robert Mueller apparently did was lay out, here are all the facts. We're not, we're not saying he committed a crime. We're not making an exoneration. What we're doing is saying, basically, Department of Justice, you evaluate it, and they say that the Attorney General, Rod Rosenstein, the Deputy Attorney General, and the Office of Legal Counsel made the uh, conclusion that there was no crime. So you both know, uh, as lawyers, that there are different standards uh, the, the criminal standards that the Department of Justice follows are quite different from the standard that the House of Representatives, for example, might look to for potential action against a president. And so do you, are you concerned that that is something that could still happen because it's a different question about whether or not the Department of Justice sees any um, evidence beyond a reasonable doubt? Well, about obstruction? Well, if, if, if the Democratic members of Congress are willing to apologize for their two, three years of saying there was evidence of collusion, there's treasonous conduct, they have a direct evidence of collusion, he was involved in collusion, if they'll apologize for that, maybe we would have a sense they'd have an objective view of this. It's also absurd to premise an obstruction uh, case when there's no underlying crime. I don't think any sensible lawyer would ever do that. It, it, look, no crime was committed. So what is he doing? Obstructing an investigation of a non-crime? And finally, it's ridiculous to say there was obstruction. We wouldn't be having the Mueller report if there was obstruction. Correct. So let me, uh, so, uh, so Mayor, Nobody uh, was interfered uh, with. No uh, one did anything wrong. Based, based on your interpretation of this four-page le letter, and I assume both of you have already consulted with uh, your client, the President of the United States, does he still support releasing everything to Congress and the American public, as he said the other day? 
the president made a statement under the regulations, Wolf, it is up to the attorney general to determine the way in which this is released. Uh, that can be a determination that's made by the attorney general. Certainly, it's his private lawyers, Rudy and I, don't engage that. That's not an issue where we have jurisdiction. But would you so, like that to happen? Sure. I mean, all like it to happen because if, if it doesn't happen, somebody is going to say there's something hidden there. Uh, let me say this for the 400th time. The president did not do anything wrong. He didn't engage in collusion. I think now that is proven beyond any doubt. Same thing on Twitter. And he did not engage in any kind of obstruction of justice known to man. Unless you can obstruct justice somewhere in your head. I mean, this is ridiculous. The yeah. attorney general, though, under the regulations, has the authority to make determine yeah. what's public. And what we, we don't know is what's national security information. We can't waive that. We, we certainly can't waive that. What might be executive privilege that would have to be protected under executive privilege? Again, that's not our decision. Grand jury material under 6E. Uh, those are decisions, and again, people that maybe have been looked at but exonerated uh, or declined, you're not supposed to move that forward. So but, uh, I just want to be precise, though, Jay, 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 I just want to be precise, and, and Mr. Mayor, I want to be precise. Uh, both of you say the president didn't do anything wrong as far as obstruction of justice or collusion or conspiracy or coordination. If he didn't do anything wrong, I assume he has nothing to hide and that all this information that Robert Mueller uh, collected should be made available to Congress. Well, we don't know. We can't say that because we don't know. We, we, we understand the facts that we know. We don't know what their grand jury material would be that would affect other people or declinations that were made up to other people. And, yeah, and that's not a situation we would get. It's a, it's a legal, it's a legal uh, minefield. For example, if you violate Rule 6E, it's a criminal offense. Right. So you better do, I mean, I, I spent a long time the last couple of days with a Watergate special prosecutor. They went to court. A judge had to make the determination. And by the way, their report was never made public until 27 years later. Well, their special so, counsel also got fired, so maybe that's not no, a, okay. a good that did analogy. Not happen, but that but did not that happen, didn't happen here. Where's the obstruction, well, guys? And it didn't happen here. Can, There's not. Can, can I ask you about the uh, presidential interview process? Because you were both so involved in that. The, the determination. We don't have the time. We don't have the time for that now. We can go over this. Well, real quick, real quick, real quick. The fact real is, quick, okay. the, the fact, the fact is, on obstruction of justice, the Mueller team, the Robert Mueller, got no access to the president either in writing or orally. So, how much of a game changer was that? In and how much did that determine? The, the findings on obstruction of justice, that they couldn't talk well, to the that's president. Not something we, can't we can't comment on what impact that had on the uh, attorney general, uh, excuse me, the special counsel. Uh, we gave the president our best legal advice as to how to proceed under the existing precedents in the D.C. Circuit, which is a famous SB case. And when all that information, let's not forget that the president provided 1.4 million pages of documents dozens and dozens of witness interviews, all of that went forward. To then say you have the right to subpoena the president, which, by the way, was never, we never had to litigate that issue to hear that, is one thing we could say. Obviously, we knew if, would have known if we did at some point, but we did not. There was no litigation over the subpoena issue. Uh, we felt confident from the outset that we met the standards under SB, and if, if there was a request for a a subpoena or a demand of a subpoena or the issuance of a subpoena, we would have we would have we would have we would have dealt with it. We didn't have to do that.